Um, joining me to discuss Sean Evans, a wine educator. He'll have his uh, work cut out with me and a blogger from the Geordie mm. Wine Club. Good morning to you, Sean. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you from you. You all right? I'm, I'm very well. Are we, still, are we still allowed to mention Blue Nun or, or is that just being struck off? Um, well, I'm all about German wines at the moment, so yeah, you can. Oh, I can. I German wine. Oh, yep. good, good. That's good. It's not one of the best ones, though. Blue. We need to talk about natural wine. You mentioned ordinary wine, Jane. We'll come back to that in a second. But what is natural wine, Sean? Natural wine. Well, we're talking about wines made on a smaller scale with um, organic or biodynamic vineyards. So that's less artificial spraying and chemicals and trying to preserve the life and the health of the soil and the vineyard. And then in the winery, less additions, um, less filtering, and basically trying to make grape just out, um, trying to make wine just out of grapes. Right. Um, and and as, adding as few things as you can. That's basically it. And, and so why? Is it to make it taste better? Is it because you want a more natural... Uh, product for environmental reasons? I mean, what was the thinking behind it? Well, it, it's all about taste because you're trying to get the place in the glass. And um, we, we wine people, we talk about terroir, which is like the, the site, the soil, the sun. Um, and sometimes the, the yeasts, the bacteria, the microbes, things like that, all of those things add to that place in the glass. Right. So um, we're trying to preserve those. And if, if you filter too much or you add too many things that mask that, then you can sort of detract from the sense of place in the glass. I, I think the theory is that on natural wine is that nothing is added and nothing is taken away. And about yeah. a decade ago, all pretty much every single natural wine that I tasted was so funky and feral that you said you couldn't even drink a glass, let alone Funky a and feral. Well, they were, really were horrors, and you could always pick them out in a blind tasting because they were, you know, they had these very sort of feral overtones to them. Uh, now they're still wacky, they're still quirky. As Sean said, they're made by small-scale artisan producers who rather revel in their kind of weird and wonderful flavours. They often don't taste, by the way, of the grapes or the country or the place they came from, they have a kind of new dimension and they have very dominant tannins and very high acidity, which makes <clears> them, <throat> woof, you know, when you taste them, you kind of, <laughs> you start, <laughs> it's quite startling wines, but, you know, they are good with food. They're good with very flavoursome food. But that is only the best of them. And I think probably where I'm going to part company with Sean, alas, is that, you know, for every good natural wine, wine I taste in the UK, I probably taste 10 horrors. It's right. that kind of percentage, and that's the problem. 